Good evening, folks. Welcome to, I think it's my second or third live stream today. So uh, Rick McNamee is shortly due to join us from Durban. Uh, Yed unfortunately had to cancel because they are out doing the thing they have to do to keep their community safe. And uh, yeah, th this, is, this is not a stream that was very impromptu. And obviously, it's very much due to the fact that there are, um, you know, to, it's it's reliant on the availability of the guys doing the heavy lifting being here to talk to us and giving us their perspective on what's actually been going on on the ground in, in Durban KZN but good to see all you good people here tonight you'll be seeing myself speak to General Leonard Max again tomorrow evening at 8 p.m I just need to set that stream up the general wants to come back to talk to us about the present situation and something that I find particularly curious and that I'll discuss with Rick when he comes on is this directive issued by the Durban Metro Police that the people defending their communities must now stand down and dismantle their barricades and so on and so forth. And, you know, there have been commentators going, yeah, but the people with their cowboy antics and the and I'd like to say, do you, have you realized that it's complete chaos in Durban? The only reason the chaos isn't worse is because people, ordinary citizens, have actually taken ownership of their space because the government has left a massive vacuum due to their inability to actually secure the safety of the citizens of the Republic or even the residents of that metro. And that vacuum needs to be filled by people who want to see safety and security still exist. Otherwise, that vacuum will be filled by the rioters and looters who will come and loot homes and burn um, burn houses down and it would be a complete disaster which is something we want to avoid the amount of loss of life we will see from that is far worse than the odd cowboy um, misbehaving um, but this is also the thing you know the people going oh but it's these people misbehaving there's I I've yet to see proof of it I've yet to see proof that a single um, community policing forum or single neighbor watch or single community patrol has actually misbehaved. You know, the, the people who are doing uh, the so-called torching of townships and things like that, you know, there needs to be some proof that it's, this, it's th that that is really the thing that's being addressed. And I don't think that's the case at all. Um, it's absolutely criminally irresponsible for the Durban Metro, the same bureaucrats that have failed to do their jobs to now demand uh, from this this moral high horse that the citizens stop protecting themselves. It's absolute nonsense. I'm sorry, if you want people to step aside and let law enforcement do their jobs, then for fuck's sakes, law enforcement needs to be there to do their jobs. And here's Rick. Hang on. Mr. McNamee, how are you doing, sir? Well, Rick, Rick is sorting out his mic uh, and his camera, but he'll be with us in a moment. So um, just a disclaimer, technical problem, my stream yard actually giving me hassles. And if I just drop off uh, the stream for no reason whatsoever, I will be back. That's been happening the last few days randomly. Rick, can you hear us? I can. Oh, fantastic. How are you doing, Squire? You, you, you look like you've had a rough couple of days. I'm a little bit shattered. I just woke up from a nap about 10 minutes ago. It's been very busy. Um, yeah, lots happening. Hopefully quietening down now. It does seem like things are possibly, I don't know. Although that's, uh, I'm talking about my area. I'm definitely getting reports of other areas that are still very, very active. So I don't know if they've peaked yet. It feels like maybe in this area we've peaked. We did, there was a meeting today, a community meeting with some of the Indunas and the ward councillors and, you know, the, uh, what do they say? The, who do they always consult? The relevant um, stakeholders. You know? Relevant stakeholders, yes, yeah. yes. And the 20, the 2021 buzzword. Yeah, um, yeah I, the, Yed can't join us tonight because um, okay. uh, he's, oh, okay, go, the people saying your vo volume is very low. Um, let's oh, just quickly see if we can sort while well, well, you're busy with that, Yed can't join us um, because he's actually expecting his area to get a bit hot tonight. So, um, unfortunately, he had to cancel. But, I mean, that's completely understandable. Oh, and Brian would have joined us as well. And he's on incident calls 
pertaining amongst other things South Africa but also Indonesia and elsewhere so he can't join us um, just to do a bit of troubleshooting which mic are you using yeah that's still pretty s and unless you just speak really loudly because I think the that laptop mic might not be and this unless it's you don't have a mic in your earpiece that is no, 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 this is my always set up that I always use so, I don't know what to I wonder. Change. That's I weird. Mean, I'll just have to speak really loud and hope you guys can hear me. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> that would probably work. I'll use guys, my listen. Voice. <laughs> um, so, on this note, I was just discussing with the audience um, the Durban Metro cop chief, whatever said that you know these these communities looking after their own security must stand down and i'm like that's a really cool thing yeah exactly that's a really cool thing to say that cool stand down so that the law enforcement people can come and do their jobs but then the fucking law enforcement people need to come and do their jobs which which has now been proven oh it's on sunday they're not capable of doing because they don't have the personnel they don't have the resources they don't have the equipment and they certainly don't have the ammo because the very same same people they're telling to stand down they've been begging ammo from yeah i mean on the ground that's totally different all of the metro guys here and the saps guys have been super glad to have us every time they drive past um you know one of the the roadblocks they are just giving us thumbs up and saying thanks for the support and keep up the good work and you know good job so you know he's it's a typical management being out of touch with what's happening on the ground yeah yeah um and guys i'll i'll speak a bit softer so rick speaks a bit louder and you can turn your volume up and then it'll balance out a little bit that's exactly the problem is this guy uh, the bureaucrats are completely and utterly out of touch with what's happening um on the ground clearly because I've gotten similar reports from everywhere. I've gotten reports of, um, I mean, uh, I asked Yed, when was the last time he saw a cop? And he said, well, uh, in uniform 72 hours ago, because I said, you know, with all the, with all the shooting that's been going on, um, you know, has anyone come to check up? And he's like, no, but he's had lots of cops off duty out of uniform that live in the area or in the neighborhood or the surrounding neighborhoods that have actually joined them on the line to assist in conducting these these security operations to keep the community secure. And I mean, horror stories, you know, the Westville hospital was nearly overrun and it was thanks to the actions of a handful of cops on duty and off duty. And I presume a couple of armed civilians that that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Do you have any specific insight into that story? I don't know about that story, but my personal experience, we've had SAPS and Metro side by side, a lot of, and a lot of the security companies, but majority um, you know, private citizens, some armed, some not. Everyone who isn't armed, wishing they were armed, wishing they had a gun, wishing they could get a gun. Um, I got a message from somebody today offering, asking if I knew anyone who would sell, sell them a rifle for 20 grand. But um, yeah, that's the other thing is how many people now suddenly have been messaging, asking for, you know, how to get a gun, where can I get a gun, where can I get paintball, where can I get flashbangs, where can I get ammo, where can I get bulletproofs, it's, yeah, everybody's suddenly realizing, oh, we should have all this shit. Well, exactly, you know, and um, the rest of us suddenly don't look so crazy anymore. And um, I think Fred Jacob says that the Premier of KZN has thanked civilians for their efforts. The Minister of Defence has complained that civilian security companies and their personnel haven't done enough because they're so well armed and trained. So there's no single message. It's like you're either doing, you, either you're doing a good job or you're not doing enough or you should get out the way. These idiots have absolutely no, no single message because they're clearly panicking. Um, Rick, yeah. what has your experience been? How, has, how did this thing kick off? How did it develop? Um, okay, I'll speak Tell us a story. My experience in my yeah. area. Um, obviously, you know, there was some organized Zuma protesting that started last week, you know, Thursday, Friday, a little bit on Saturday. I actually got a, a puncture in my tire driving past a, um, a now cold um, scene of the protest on Saturday morning and had to, you know, fit, fit a new tire. Uh, then on Sunday night, it all started kicking off here. Um, and I think the, the first major thing was that we had people in my area hijack a TLB, which is like a bulldozer, and use that to crack open the local tops and raid that. Uh, that was Sunday night. Um, 
and that's when it all kind of really started in earnest with the mobs and with lines of guys pushing them back. Monday night, also very busy, a lot of intense action. During the day, it tends to quieten off a bit. In the afternoons, I think the guys were all taking a rest and sleeping it off. Um, and then last night, things were definitely a lot quieter. Um, last night, quite organically, it seems that a lot of people in different areas decided to take it upon themselves to start stopping and recovering a lot of looted goods from vehicles. Whereas on the Monday night, uh, the thought was, you know, we blockaded off our area. We were stopping people coming in and turning them around. Anybody inside the area, we were just sending out. We just wanted to get them out, you know, maintain calm and get everybody out of the area who wanted to leave and stop new people, you know, anyone coming in. And we were just watching carload after carload of stuff go. And then last night, um, I was moving around between a few places, but by the time I got to the one main roadblock, uh, somebody there had, had elected to take this course of action and we ended up with mountains of goods on the sides of the roads. I don't know if it was the best decision, um, because that in itself then made that site a target. Um, and to get that stuff back to its rightful owners isn't likely. So everybody's sort of decided it's all going to charity and that's been very well managed. Um, it was all taken to a lot. Well, the saps was full. They started taking stuff to saps, and I'm talking bucky loads and bucky loads, and and those those H100 light delivery vehicles full of stuff. Uh, saps was full. The entire parking lot of saps was jammed. So they used a local school as a storage point, um, and some of the stuff's going to SP. You know, there were perishable like frozen chicken. That's all going to be taken to the SBCA. Some of the goods they're going to try and see if they can figure out exactly where it came from and get it back to bigger stuff. But, you know, there's loads of small appliances and, and random, you know, I almost felt sorry for the people that were looting nappies and sanitary products, but then you had fridges and washing machines and, and big screen TVs and, you know, that stuff yep. to hell with them. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing is that the sheer amount of chaos that, that that's been attached to this. I mean, you, you, you've got, you've got these, these effect predators that started this whole business, allegedly started it. Uh, in the name of Free Jacob Zuma, um, I think that paradigm lasted all of maybe three hours before it became very clear that this has got absolutely sweet bugger all to do with Jay Z, mm -hmm. and that uh, th that it was overtaken by two other elements. One was this complete chaos of looting anything and everything to distraction. Mm -hmm. Then there was the public violence element attached to it, and then there was the almost now targeted. Uh, uh, how shall we put it, targeted violence towards specific infrastructure as well as specific residential areas. So there, there are so many dynamics at play here that it's, it's. I'd imagine just securing your neighborhood for the first couple of nights was the primary concern. The fact that you guys are shifting over into more proactive operations is a very good indication that the tide is turning. Yeah. But you've got other problems now pertaining to getting your hands on day-to-day -day living resources. 100%. The, the focus today definitely has shifted to cleaning up. And um, today I was escorting um, food shipments from the Midlands down into my area. Um, so, yeah, there, there are getting a ton of messages coming through on all the various neighborhood groups of people needing food, fuel, medicine, uh, you know, long queues outside of shops, cars jamming up the roads outside petrol stations. Things are slowly opening up and it's been incredible to see how people have pulled together, neighbors helping neighbors, you know, this one needs that, that one's got that, where we can get this from, people putting out lists, where's open, where's closed, where there are things available, where they've run out. Um, so that intel sharing and that sense of community has been, has been really encouraging uh, to see. Okay, uh, that, that is exactly it. And I think this is something I, I spoke to Ramon with earlier is that people really have pulled together in the in the face of disaster and across various communities. I mean, you can see it amongst the black communities in, in KZN as well as Joburg, the Indian community, the white communities, the mixed communities, because most communities these days are mixed to some degree. I mean, I don't think you can really call anything a, a white community anymore. So that that uh, race narrative that that uh, the left keeps wanting to push is entirely irrelevant. What what is concerning, though, is the potential for this to become if it's if it's mismanaged, a humanitarian disaster that will have its own very bad knock on effects due to this disruption to these supply lines. 
or there's a huge issue at the moment with the chicken farmers that are, you know, the, those massive broiler units where they have, you know, hundreds of thousands of chickens in these large warehouses and they, they run out of feed for them. So they need to get feed to those chickens, otherwise they're all going to starve to death and they're going to have hundreds of thousands of rotting chicken carcasses. Um, and what you were saying about the, the mixed communities, I mean, we've had everybody standing together. Although you, you might say that I live in a predominantly white neighborhood, we had, you know, we had people of all color standing together at the blocks. Funny enough, the, the, my doctor brothers were the way more trigger happy ones who were very happy to pop up warning shots at the, at the approaching mobs. And then yesterday we got a message from a local ward councillor saying, uh, so basically there's a township down in the valley from where I stay. And they, the, the, the councillor for the area was saying that, you know, everything there is gone. Everything's been looted to shit. Can some of the people from there come and help us defend what's left up here, you know, and stand together as a sign of solidarity? Um, because, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing to save down there anymore. So can they come volunteer and join us here? Well, that is awesome to hear. I mean, that is really the sort of uh, cooperation that you, you want to see because you know what? Um, everybody was wrong. The, the lefties were wrong because they were expecting, you know, if, if something should like this should ever happen, that the, the trigger happy uh, white racists would, would, would put the boot to the, to the black population and, and the racists on the right, uh, you know, the, those guys were going, oh, you know, it's going to be this race war between black and white. And, you know, they're going to try drive the, the black people are going to try to drive the whites into the sea. None of that happened. In fact, the total opposite to both those extreme scenarios occurred. We have cooperation between people in their communities trying to safeguard themselves, their families, working together towards that common purpose, regardless of their culture, their religion, the color of their skin, the languages they speak. And and this is a, th th these are just the stories I've been getting for the past three days, four days straight. And it sounds very much like that's your situation. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we did have, you know, you, you do still get those people. Um, we did have, you know, one guy in particular stands out in my mind who was who was at one of the roadblocks with me. Um, he did not get any support from the backup. He was very successful. All of us. I think we just lost your audio there quite badly, Rick. Sorry, man. Um, uh, there we go. It's back. It's back. Whatever you did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we were all, some of us didn't even want to be around him because we just knew he was going to cause more trouble than, than anything. Yeah. And, and that's, that's exactly kind of what's, what's happened. So um, this is, this is a, this is a good sign for the level of relations we have with each other in this country. That even if we don't like each other particularly much, we are still willing to help each other when, when things get really bad. And Gerrit Bais asked a question about any insight how this is going to affect Gauteng. And the problem for Gauteng is, apart from the unrest there, the fact that the N3 is closed, that major artery between Durban and, and Johannesburg, and Durban Harbour being quite likely the single most important port in this entire country, that's where the ammo lands, folks. Very few of the other ports are allowed to handle explosives. I think perhaps only Cape Town, PE can't. And even Cape Town is extremely limited to how, what they can handle. So if all the ammo imports that come in by sea, by ship, come via Durban Harbour, um, the amount of agricultural produce and oil refining that happens around about Durban and that metro and that is then fed back to Johannesburg is significant. So you're looking at potential fuel shortages, you're looking at certain ammo shortages, and you're looking at pot potential massive disruption to the food, food supply chain in Gauteng that could be hugely destabilizing in its own right in Gauteng province. So I recommend, don't go panic by toilet paper, but go get some, some lentils and split peas that are dried and stuff like that that's going to last a while because that might be all you have to eat for a couple of days while the system tries to to get these hiccups or these these um what do you call it these air bubbles out of it rick you you you, you are smiling the things you could eat for a couple of days and that no, this is also true but, <laughs> but 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 give us your insight though because i mean you are living this at the moment uh, absolutely i mean when i was driving through hillcrest this afternoon and i just saw how many people were and you know the messages on the whatsapp groups of people who are out of stuff and it's only been 
a two day disruption and this is how stuffed everything is. It's like, did yep. these people not learn at the beginning of lockdown that there can be these kinds of unexpected disruptions and that we need to maybe, you know, have some extra food on hand or have some, you know, extra, I don't know, long life milk, you know, you know, the basic stuff that I don't even think twice about these people are just absolutely helpless. And, and the fact that they now all have to go out and queue and be vulnerable rather than just chilling. I mean, I mean, obviously I was going out and volunteering, but if I needed to sit here for a couple of weeks, that would be fine. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be an issue. Um, I'm helping out neighbors just now with some milk and, you know, a few other people with, with some things that I managed to get to that. Oh, it's already done. Thank you. Um, while I was napping, obviously. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a busy, busy few days. Sleep yeah. Between, few and far between. Yeah, but you guys, listen, um, you guys have done amazing work. All the community, listen, to all the communities in Durban, all the people in Durban, um, I said it earlier today, I'm going to say it again. Um, thank God, and if you're an atheist, thank goodness, for uh, CPFs, shooting clubs, neighborhood watches, and very much for taxi associations. Yeah. Because, um, you know, all these, all these structures were put in place for different reasons. Now that they're being actively mobilized in the face of a major crisis, they're actually really doing amazing work, really amazing work. Yeah. And, and ultimately, all these structures are things governments wanted to ban. They don't like community policing forums. They hate neighborhood watches, want to regulate the fuck out of them, want to kill shooting clubs entirely by making sport shooting essentially possible and banning you the, the right to carry a gun for self-defense. All these things, you know, every single government policy is being proven disastrously wrong by a single crisis. Mm -hmm. And aren't we really happy about that? It's giving people that kick in the ass. Well, you know, if we look at lockdown level five last year and, and how people haven't learned the lesson, and here we are again, maybe six months from now, this will all just be, you know, oh, that horrible weekend back, back in July, you know? No, you, you know what the difference is though? A virus doesn't tend to burn infrastructure down. Um, it's a much more visceral in your face crisis because, you know, you could actually see the destruction. You could smell it. You could live it. Um, you could see physically the fact that the authorities can, cannot meaningfully uh, fail to meaningfully respond, the effect that that directly has on people's lives. Um, uh, just, guys, I know Rick's, Rick's doing the best. He's doing the best he can with his mic. He will speak up. Yeah, there's nothing I can adjust here to try and turn it up, so I'm just going to have to shout. Yeah. Um, the the man hasn't slept since Sunday as well. Like, um... <laughs> yeah, about the government response, I mean, what were the numbers of 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 um, SANDF deployed for COVID? And we've had what two two and a half thousand deployed now, and it was what okay, two thousand so, something. So before before Darren Ulifir shits in his pants again. Um, yes, cool. We, we, we don't have 75,000, um, soldiers. We have, uh, only like 35, yeah. but we've deployed two and a half thousand to an entire metro. And in fact, entire, well, to two or three metros. I'm not even sure how, what the deployment figures look like, but I mean, the SNDF is so thinly spread on the ground. They're going to be able to maybe respond to one crisis at a time. They're not going to secure your communities. You know, that's just a stupid idea. No, no. I'm going to try and pull these headphones out. I just don't know if I'm going to get a bad echo then. So let me just test that. Is that better? That's actually, that's that seems to be a lot better. And I'm, are you picking up your echo? No, not at all. Okay, fine. Let's do this. Yeah, that's a lot Last better. Comments, can you hear me clearer? I don't know why. I mean, this is the setup I use for every stream we've ever done. So, no, this is a lot better. That's amazeballs. Okay, cool. <sighs> All right. So, um, yeah, I think. Uh, how, how do you know what the situation at the port is? By the way, Rick. Um, I don't know about the port, but I do know about some of the distribution centers that have been basically stripped clean there were huge traffic jams of people trying to get out of them i drove past value logistics um just past key ridge today and there was still shit all over the side of the freeway um my brother lives near the mass mart you know that's all the game 
uh, I think it's macro and uh, yeah, it's macro and game and uh, Dion, no, is it Dion Wired or I don't know, whatever. Yeah, and that it was just keen out the macro in Springfield Park, which is like the biggest macro in Durban, uh, was completely gutted. I saw photos today, literally empty shelves. I mean, it's a huge warehouse, incredibly large warehouse, and the entire parking lot, which was a very large parking lot, they had all of the awnings to shade the cars had been built out of solar panels, which powered oh, no. the entire macro shop and every single solar panel had been removed. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. And um, I just wondered to myself, I wonder how many of those solar panels are still in a working condition after having been removed and carried off. Yeah, look, it's, 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 it's also where one has to start asking questions about how much of this is genuine looting from necessity, which is all probably almost none of it. And the overwhelming of it is looting out of out of some form of of destructive mob violence uh, bandwagon effect, and it's and it's bad. It's really bad. And you know, you get you, you, it comes down to this philosophical debate. But why would you shoot someone to protect property? And you go, well, if the property damage is wide enough and big enough, then that in itself becomes an immediate and direct threat to life. And then it's not just one life that is threatened. You start threatening the lives of, of millions of people in an entire metro. So that is where the stupidity of these, because you, you've seen it on, on Facebook. There, there are always these Facebook professors that go, oh, but the guys are open carrying. You know, what about the FCA? And I'm going, are you fucking for real? Do you think anyone cares about the FCA when there's a mob trying to burn down your entire neighborhood? I mean, it's, it's completely irrelevant, folks. And it's the same with property. Why would you use lethal? But now imagine that it's a it's a chemical factory. It produces, amongst other things, uh, medical oxygen in the middle of the, the right now. which we need right now. And <laughs> if that factory goes up in smoke, how many people are going to die as a direct result of that disruption? Yeah. yeah. Um, fortunately, from what I've seen, is that uh, most of the gunfire has been extremely one sided. Um, I haven't yep. heard, you know, in my experience, any back and forth. It's really all been one directional from SAP security, private guys, you know, a few warning shots, the guys tend to scatter. I know that there have been more serious clashes where people have died, but I can't speak to that personally. I don't want to spread hearsay. I've heard a couple of stories, but um, nothing I can, I can, you know, confirm. confirm. Um, I saw something before I went to sleep that the death toll was at 76, which I don't believe. I'm sure it's I don't believe that for a moment. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, that's that's kind of like a day and a half of normal South African murder rate. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, I've there's been a lot of very panicked people. I mean, the gunfire at quite like I said yesterday was quite a bit quieter, but Sunday night and all through Monday and Monday night into Tuesday morning, you know, there was this constant sporadic gunfire of you know groups of shots going off here and there just coming in from from all around um and like i said fortunately you could hear that it was just you know a couple of you know a little double tap here and a double tap there it wasn't prolonged it wasn't intense it wasn't two directions of two different sounding guns back and forth so you know just to calm the residents minds at least they could sort of know that that's most likely just warning shots chasing people off um and it was all distant uh, well from 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 where i was most of the time when I wasn't actually actively at a roadblock um, because there's a lot of panic people and, and, you know, everyone's stressing, everyone's on edge. So hopefully calmer heads now will prevail and, and moving forward, we just have to rebuild and try and fix the supply issues. Yeah. And that's, the, and that's kind of where, where your jobs aren't quite done in the sense that, I mean, I've always said that armed and trained civilians, especially if they're organized into, let's call it a, a bloody militia for the sake of the word, is, is, is a national security asset. Hmm. And the armed and trained militias have been working in conjunction with the security forces in order to restore law and order with minimal loss of life, with minimal loss of property, and with great levels of discipline and restraint. I mean, there was no free for all here. There was everything that I've seen and heard. It's been, you know, people have, have displayed bar, you know, a handful of regrettable incidents, astounding levels of, of good discipline and decorum. And 
when you say about escorting um, produce vehicles and things like that, uh, that's possibly where civilians are going to have to get directly involved again. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think the infrastructure exists for private security or the authorities to secure those routes anytime in the, in, in the near future. Well, I must say the, the N3 was very quiet today. Um, my buddy who'd been up the day before said it was extremely hairy going up and back. Um, but today, I mean, I went fully loaded for bear expecting all sorts of trouble. And it was actually a super chill drive and the road was quiet and I've never seen the N3 that empty. Well, that is a, that's a positive sign because one of the first things of violence that I was alerted to was a guy that was um, caught in a roadblock, not a, not a community roadblock, a rioter roadblock on one of the main arteries. I think it was the N3. And when he issued a verbal challenge, uh, there were guys in the bushes on the side of the road that just opened up on his car and he managed to do a U-turn on the freeway and managed to get back home. Mm -hmm. But he had seven bullet holes in his car when he got home. And that was on like the Saturday already. That's before things really kicked off, really kicked off on the Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, you know, the fact that, that that you're in a position now of coordinating response and, and it's not just, co you know, covering for your wickets anymore, Mm. is a good sign but apparently that's that's not everywhere the case in no. durban yet no absolutely not it's definitely i know in westmead today there was a lot of shit still going down uh which is like an industrial area where they were going into the factories and looting the factories so um yeah just getting back to that militia thing what is that what's the preamble of the second amendment it's uh for the my brain is so tired i'm really battling oh, for the tree of liberty to uh to be refreshed what for the Something about for the necessity of a, a free state, a well the right, militia, uh, yeah. the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But the, the yes. first part, it's like for the for the security of a free state or for the, for the security, yeah, something yeah. Like that. Um, and, and the well regulated militia being the people. If you go read the Federalists' papers, that's not the military guys. The, the, the Federalist papers make it clear that the founders of uh, founding fathers of the United States, when they wrote the, the, the Second Amendment, specific in the Constitution, were referring to the people, the ordinary people as the militia. And uh, Lozulus, um, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly, I'm so tired. I'm sorry. I apologize if I'm screwing up your handle. Um, that's exactly what we need. We need political groups to come out and say these civil defense groups are highly important. Um, you know, it's something that, that in the time of a major crisis you want to roll out. And it's something that is not just useful now when there's actual riots and looting. If there's a natural disaster, these are people you want to be able to call up to, 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 to fill a security void. So the emergency medical personnel, humanitarian personnel, other personnel that needs to do jobs to help keep people alive can do so safely and securely while the, the so-called militia, let's call them civilian defense organizations, are securing that area because the authorities do not have the capacity or the manpower to do it or the skills. Mm -hmm. So um, that's exactly... Right there. Uh, uh, sorry, there you go. A well-regulated militia being issued for the security of free state. Yep, that's exactly it. So, um, I mean, essentially, yeah, com commando sounds better, guys. I agree. Um, it's a better word. So <laughs> Thanks, Don. Can't do any underwear. <laughs> uh, but um, I mean, yeah. we, Fred says it exactly. You know, um, but bear in mind, you know, when you see people getting a bit trigger happy, most of them haven't slept for three or four days. They're under extreme amounts of stress. Um, their ability to to cognitively think on their feet is running you know the rams melted the motherboard has shorted out they're doing the best they can where they are and the reason they're put in such a precarious situation is because the authorities have failed um the pelian principles though rick if you think about who a policeman is is an ordinary member of the community who's just on a full-time basis yeah. uh, you know concerned with policing yeah. there's no difference between you and and the police officer just because he has a badge and a gun, he just does it full time. Yeah. And what you were saying about the the gun rights rally and and this new bill, I think if they think after this anybody is going to actually give up their arms, they are living in cloud cuckoo land. No one yeah. after this is even going to consider or entertain the thought of of giving up their arms or the right to own more than a hundred rounds. I mean, we've had saps running out of ammo 
begging people. I've had constant calls. Where can I get ammo? Where can I get this? Where can I get that? I had a guy come to my door who I dropped off a bag of ammo for. Um, I heard, I've heard stories about guys organizing light aircraft and landing on golf courses to bring yeah. in and ammo. That happened. Um, that had private farms. Yeah. Um, guys out of their own pocket paying 21 grand ammo bills to, to get ammo to the saps and, and to the guys on the front lines. So this whole no, you know, hundred rounds and no reloading. No, that needs to, this is the thing. And I had a discussion with, with organizations I won't name just yet that were a little bit, you know, <laughs> pardon my French folks, a bit soft cock about the issue. And I gave them my opinion. I said, well, now is when we get confrontational with the politicians and say, due to your fuck up, we went above and beyond the line to, to salvage the situation, you, your ineptitude, your corruption, your incompetence got us into. We turned our guns on, on bad people in righteous defense of life, limb, property, and the rule of law. If you, firstly, you will scrap these amendments immediately. Secondly, you will give us what we ask for. And thirdly, should you ever think of trying to take our guns again or restricting as much as one right, the same guns we turned on these looters in the name of righteous defense will fucking turn on you for the same reasons. Mm. So do not tread on us. We are done. There's no more and there's nothing to discuss. This is a watershed moment and we cannot let it go to waste. And, and the cool part is the, the, the guys I spoke to agreed with me that they are going to, to change their tone. They're not going to be soft, speaking softly to the government anymore. And that again, you start hardening up a bit. And I'm like, good, because soft negotiation behind closed doors has gotten our community nowhere. nowhere. Um, I mean, did you see that black guy on, on ENCA this morning guarding that, that big mall in, in, in Soweto? Um, no. yeah, like he I was there with so many messages and videos. I, there's no way I've been able to even read them. All. He, he, um, he's, my, he's my spirit animal. I'm going to try and get a, a clip of him and send it to you. But he was standing in front of the mall with a whole bunch of other black guys, young guys, plate carriers, AR-15s, guns. They're like, this is our mall. We are guarding this mall. We've got guns, we've got ammo, and we're telling the looters to come. And I'm like, dude, you, you've got it. You've got the right idea. And if that doesn't, if that doesn't send the message, I don't give a, f a hoot. My, there you go. My pony, I'm all Fred, thank you. If, I don't give a hoot what the lefties think or the government think. But the rest of society needs to understand that this isn't a, a, a right-wing white man issue. This is an everybody issue. Um, oh, but you know that that card is always played when when something's happening that the government doesn't like, and it's just the fact that the government is scared of the citizenry. So what's the best thing to do? Brand brand everyone right wing racists because those are so evil and so demonic and so you know associated with Nazi Germany and Hitler that oh my God no how could we ever want that? Yeah no exactly <laughs> like um, <laughs> because that's the only card they have to play, and I like how Gun Free South Africa tweeted. The only thing they could tweet about this is the one guy that was the uh, old man that was killed during looting, shot and killed. We don't know who shot him. We don't know how he ended up dead. But that's the only thing they could, could, could tweet about. I'm like, do they realize that if they didn't take shotguns away at station level, thanks to GFSA forcing the issue, a whole f much fewer people would have died because the station cops would actually be able to respond and we wouldn't have to wait hours for pops to rock up. But if you consider how widespread this has been and how much has been going on and the sheer volume of both the looters and the responders, you would think that the death toll would be astronomical. I mean, if you go by yeah, the you would. we haven't even hit Marikana level yet. <laughs> no, we haven't. And most of the shooting's been done by citizens. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's crazy. No, sorry, I laughed at that, but that's true. We haven't, this was the big fear, like, oh my God, it's going to be another Marikana and all the trigger happy gun owners are just going to cause chaos. And that didn't happen. The total opposite happened is we so had. Much and, and so much, you know, okay, we did. <laughs> I had one scary moment. Uh, I think it was last night. So the days are kind of blurring together now uh, where somebody ran our roadblock and they were being chased by saps and someone popped off shots, but I'd, don't know the person that fired because there were people on both sides of the road and i think they kind of swung around following the vehicle i don't think that they were too aware of what direction they were pointing and you know what their backstop was which was a little bit yeah. uh, hairy 
Yeah, and it's going to get hairier the more tired they get. But anyway, like yeah, yeah. And then we did have a guy also run through a roadblock and jump. He hit he hit a gun pole and went a little bit airborne and almost took out two of the guys at the side of the road. So you know we've had a few interesting moments, but overall, touch wood. Uh, in my experience, where I've been, it it hasn't been. You know, you know, it hasn't been super ridiculously intense. You know, there's obviously been mobs of people coming and they've turned away when they've had a few shots sent into the ground. Um, and I really, really hope that things are winding down now and, and we've had enough of it. Yeah, um, it would be great if if it would, because um, I mean, the level, the, the, the destruction of livelihoods and and just everything is intense, like it's it's awful to behold i'm i'm really happy to see people standing together and um and and the positive you know the relations that i think have been built and cemented through this issue will definitely carry through mm. because i don't think times are going to get easier going yeah. forward um and those relationships will be needed and that that sense of community will be needed but um the interesting thing is this is this is in spite of government not because of government that That's those true. relationships exist Hundred um, percent. It's it's been this complete organic grassroots coming together of people. There's no central planning here. There's no agendas. There's no freaking endless meetings. It's just people getting on with it. Um, and just to just to uh, comment on Don Richard Sparks's comment there. Um, yeah, in in these circumstances, it's been that way. You, you can't rely on that. You know, I, I, you know, I, I put a post on Facebook a couple of days ago and saying how. You know, this isn't the same as a as a personal defensive gun use where you where you are, you know, being attacked by career criminals. You might have three or four career criminals coming at you. It's very different to mobs of poor people who aren't, you know, they don't do this for a living. They're just opportunists who've banded together because, hey, free stuff. So yep. um, it, it is a different circumstance. That's why I said there is a place for warning shots and there's a place for paintball guns. And it doesn't necessarily apply to standard unnormal you know the normal stuff we discuss on gun site and edc and, and and those kind of forums yeah th th that's really kind of you know if someone said to me okay but what's the point of a pepper gun or these um these solid these solid rubber rounds i go well this is a great space for that um you know but they have it, to be backed up with more if that isn't stopping yeah. them absolutely yeah. absolutely it's 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 never a replacement for sharp point but it's a great tool for, for in its space um, yeah. And I think from what I've, I'm hearing, a lot of guys have been using that stuff correctly, and it's it's had it's had good results. Definitely. No looting, but no dead people, which is excellent, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Mo uh, Mondly, I'm 100% with you, Squire. 100, 100. Um, but the vo ultimate vote of no confidence with these fuckers is defunding them, <laughs> which. They're actually doing themselves because there's a lot of tax revenue that's not going to be forthcoming thanks to the loss of, of infrastructure, which is... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my brother works for MassMart and, and their whole, the biggest distribution center in the country is just basically ruined and gutted and in flames and everything was stripped. So, I mean, how that's going to affect all the jobs, all the stores. I know... I know I've just heard some somebody else unrelated sent a thing saying how they're discussing going more online. Um, so which means less brick and mortar stores, which means less employed people. So yeah, unfortunately, it's going to come back and bite a lot of people. And there's a lot of breadwinners who are now not going to have jobs. And unfortunately, it's a little bit of a downward spiral. Uh, yeah, but this question about the tear gas. Um, I've, I've wondered that myself. And I think it's just a case of availability. You know, I've had people asking me where they can get you know, flashbangs and tear gas, and I just don't know anyone that sells it, and I don't know where we would get it from. So, well, uh, from the authority side, quick question: What have you seen from their response? I mean, uh, how, how much, how close is your your cooperation with the police? Be have you seen them on the line? Have you have you been next to them, or have they pretty much uh, been absent and active in other areas only? They've kind of passed through our roadblocks, um, and we had one or two guys stick around for a little bit and then bugger off. So it's mostly been us, but they have been there standing next to us, endorsing us. We did have Metro come and check check out our roadblock and say, good job, guys, keep it up, and then and then move on. Um, so I don't know what, what you know, I, I, I only want to comment about what I've seen personally because, yep. you know, there's so much hearsay. 
but um, I haven't seen, uh, I can't say I've seen them being super kitted out or super equipped with, with all the toys. Well, from what I've heard in Cape Town alone, um, on rely from a reliable source, that in the event of, of things going very sideways, the police in all of CT have enough ammunition to last them 36 hours. Um, which I which I don't think is controversial. That seems to be the norm. Like the police don't uh, don't have ammo. They're short on ammo. They're short on on vehicles. They're short on bulletproof vests. They're short on uniforms. They're short on boots and ink and pens, as well as uh, fuel for the cars. So, you know, That's and I think when you when you when you defund them by three billion and then put one point seven billion into into VIP unit. Well, that's it. And we're in the midst of a of a 30% budget cut, actually, if you think about it. They cut the SAPS, SAPS budget by six billion last year. Um th then what they did is they they gave seven billion rands of emergency funding and said, Oh no, no, you know, it was only like a it was only a one percent budget cut last year. It wasn't a six percent. It would have the plan was five. Then this year they cut the budget by eleven and a half billion, which is eleven and a half percent from the original. And next year they're supposed to cut it by seven and a half, but they'll probably cut it by more. So, if if the trend continues by the end of the twenty twenty three financial year, including inflation, the SAPs would look at an erosion of purchasing power over three years of forty two percent, which is colossal. That means that the policing that presently exists won't even be able to exist then. It's shocking. Uh, Roger, are you there, or can you confirm that, or is that just a message you've been relayed? Because you know, yeah. we get so many of these kind of messages. You know, the whole the one night we were just on complete standby. We kept hearing, "Oh, there's about seventy guys around the corner. They're all just waiting to come, and they never came." And we went and drove down there, and there was no one. So you know, there's so much misinformation. Uh, you know, try and confirm everything yourself if possible. <laughs> <coughs> Um, especially, sorry, Karen. <laughs> yeah. So we had our, we, we um, right at the top of the hill. So we have a reservoir that pumps up, the, you know, water gets pumped up into our reservoir and then, and then gravity feeds the, the neighborhood. And um, the valves were tampered with. And so there was water running out of the reservoir, which obviously causes lower pressure in, in the neighborhood. That through broken telephones turned into a viral voice note going around saying that the reservoir had been blown up with a homemade bomb. Oh yeah. 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 So you just, you know, guys try and try and confirm and don't forward stuff. Uh, how it came through from PMB. Okay. I drove through there today. Um, just around Peter Maritzburg past the, the Liberty mall and on, on the side of the freeway across from Liberty mall, there were some very, very large burnt out warehouses completely you know gutted and no roofs and that the steel beams had been melted i don't know if they used jet fuel or what but um, <laughs> they, they must have flown an airliner into it had yeah. to <laughs> um so you know i know there's definitely cut going on um and i really hope the guy i have some friends in pmb tonight so i hope they they're okay but yeah you know back to the the police funding story i mean the amount of of civilians that have been supplying ammo to the guys that's that's definitely happening and definitely going on well uh, to be honest um the saps had a, an extensive amount of reservists that they could call up for exactly this mm. and then they lost 85 percent of those reservists due to mismanagement mm -hmm. um yeah. and i mean so thank thank good when i drove past from from the freeway from where i could see it the liberty mall seemed to be intact um, there were quite a few warehousing places along the way that still seem to be to be fine. Um, yeah, no, it's yeah. it's it's um, it's just looking at the, uh, trying to put trying to put perspective to the scale of this thing, the monstrous scale of the destruction and all this other stuff is um, extensive. It, it's almost impossible to do because I couldn't keep track of where everything was happening anymore. Mm. Um, Hang on, I yeah, just need I'm to. Getting to... So many... <laughs> I'm getting so many messages from all over the place and just trying to, you know, process the information and forward it on to whoever needs to actually know the stuff and then filter out and discard other stuff. Um, yeah, that's like a full time thing on its own, just on my phone going through all the stuff and then, um, yeah, yeah and physically being out there and, and holding the line. 
Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I've got the same problem. I'm not even there trying to, I can't keep up and I'm not even in the thick of it, not even close to being in the thick of it. So, I mean, for you guys, just come on and control what you've done with what you have is, is, is more than admirable. Um, Fred asks if, if the Liberty Mall is still safe and standing. That, that's, yeah, the one I drove past. From what I could see from the freeway, it still looked intact. Um, Mark Wagner, um, he heard there may be convoys on the N3 with trucks being escorted by military vehicles in the near, near future. Any truth to this? Yeah, I did hear that hopefully taxis are going to start running tomorrow and that they were going to start trying to get some trucks through. Like I said, um, my buddy went on Monday through to the Midlands. He has a farm up there and he went to get supplies. And um, he said Monday was hairy, but today uh, it was it was very chilled. Um, so I'm hoping that continues. Yeah, Chris, it has been a little bit, uh, a little bit lacking. I've been grabbing a few hours where I can, and you know, when you, even when I do sleep, it's it's kind of a very restless sleep. Um, yeah, I well, don't want to put well, my phone on silent because in in case I'm you know there's some important stuff, and then every time my phone buzzes, I kind of feel this need to check. <clears throat> Okay, so so here, here's the next thing, right? So uh, last 10 minutes of this stream and I'll let you go. Um, by the way, Leonard Max is joining us tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for a chat about the same topic, the general. Please tune in for that. But Rick, if you adv advice for, for Boogaloo survival, right? Um, stuff like the phone habits. Let's start with the, the, the magpie stuff that everyone cares about. What, what is your kit when you're out in the wild? Um, what okay, do you so deem important? My, my standard EDC of my Glock and and uh, spare mags. Onto that um, bulletproof vest, AK behind me, and about 120 rounds. Um, backpack with all my support gear, a sling, guys, a sling. Holding that thing for hours and hours and hours in your hands gets tiring. My neck is actually rubbed raw from the sling, so that's something I need to work on the padding of that sling because I haven't really used that sling. For that amount of time before um eye drops the smoke and the dust that was blowing around my eyes were burning the other night um what else gloves um just just generally your gear test it you know you, you, you it's, it's, it's a saying i'm fond of you never want the first time you try something to be the time when your life depends upon it so exactly. i bought a nice new pair of of gloves and then um i tried wearing them the other night when it got cold but i found that they were too smooth. I had no grip on on my on the foregrip of my AK, so um, I switched those gloves out for my older, thinner, cheaper, more rubberized ones. Um, absolutely medical and IFAC. Um, water and definitely and snacks. Water, snacks to keep those. going. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so water and snacks to keep you going. Water, snacks. Um, to be honest, I've been so jacked that I've, my appetite's taken a, a huge dive. I've been eating as and when I can, but as far as carry, I, I'm carrying snacks, but I just I haven't found myself digging into them when I've been out there. Um, energy drinks. Um, what else did I write in that post? Eye drops, sling, torch. Torch is absolutely essential. Um, I see a lot of guys out there without, you know, even a torch. And you know, when it comes to we had, we had vehicles approaching the roadblock at extreme speed. We had to shine onto the roadblock so they could see that there was actually stuff in the road and they needed to slam on anchors. Um, and then also to direct the people around the roadblock where there was a path to get through. Uh, good torch. You know, I even said before this, my torch is my most used piece of EDC gear. I use my torch all the time. Um, what else? We have a we have a guy who's you know on our on our neighborhood watch. We've got a very organized neighborhood watch. We've got a great patrol captain who's is extremely good, he, and he's also a very good community liaison with the with the counselors and, and you know the other indunas and that. Um, and um, we did manage to raise funds and buy a, a FLIR, you know, a um, thermal imaging thing. We haven't used it at yeah. all. Um, yeah, carry a knife as a backup, but, you know, again, I don't think, you know, I've seen a lot of people carrying knives, but uh, hopefully it hasn't come down to having to pull those out for anything. Yeah, um, yeah I think guys are loving Zello. I haven't personally used it, but I've heard a lot of people are using Zello and are on the Zello networks. We do have a, we have our own radio network with a repeater. Um, 
which we are tied into. Um, I quite liking, I like having having the walkie, you know, clipped to the bulletproof that you can just talk here. You don't have to dig in, get your phone out, unlock it. Um, yep. Oh, and also make sure your gloves are touchscreen compatible. You know, having to pull your gloves on and off every time you're wanting to use a touchscreen is a pain. So make sure your gloves either, you know, have have one where the fingers cut off, or you know, the, the gloves I have are whatever it is, capacitive or whatever, so you can actually use your touchscreen. <clears throat> Yeah. And then, yeah, you know, the usual spare batteries and, you know, all the stuff you probably should be doing already. <laughs> yeah, the, the face covering that you have to wear for COVID compliance, uh, useful for many reasons. Yeah, uh, because, and guys, and this is not being cynical, in the event of things going sideways, um, there's always an arsehole with a phone and you do not want your face on social media when things go sideways, not because you're doing something wrong or bad, but because ultimately it is just for personal security reasons, a terrible idea to have your face in, in, in a, in a volatile situation published anywhere. Just, yeah. just, just be smart about it. Taken out of context. It can always get yeah. edited, but the before and after, you know, so yeah. 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 And, uh, Willem von, 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 von Balen puts it straight, um, guys, Ultimately, even with security companies, um, they, they, they're just another layer. The, the, the core responder is still always you. Um, yeah. yeah. Where uh, can I find Rick's posts about these suggestions? On the Downside SA on, on the Facebook uh, page. And then I think Dion from Hailstorm shared it on the Hailstorm page. It's probably going to be easier to go to Hailstorm and find it there because... Can, can, you, can you send it to me? Then I'll put it up on yeah. Piratus as well yeah. as like a dedicated post. And then sure. you can find it on my website, the Facebook and then the Twitters. Hmm. Hmm. Um, power banks, probably a good idea as well. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's something, you know... Um, I haven't had to use it yet. I've been able to get home to charge up all my gear, radio, torch um, in between. And, and yeah, just keep charging everything. Whenever you get a chance, recharge yourself. Try to get some food in, try to get some liquid in, charge up. And walking in. walking with a bulletproof all day is is a serious, like, suck. Yeah. That is, that's it's a... It's been pretty cold where we are. So <laughs> that's actually been, it, it kept me warm the other night. It was freezing uh, last night up here. Um, yeah, your, your plates probably weigh, what, a good 5 kgs between the two of them. I'm actually wearing soft armor at the moment. I ordered plates and the couriers have stopped shipping because the, oh. the, their courier depot actually got hit in Westmead and completely looted. So I phoned them and they've stopped any shipments to Durban right now because I was curious about um, if their drivers would be out and if I should rather go to either the airport or the depot or whatever to, to pick up my plates. But um, no, it's it's safely sitting in there depot in Joburg and let's hope that Joburg doesn't kick off to the point that that depot gets gets raided yeah it's it, you know it's, the thing is there's there's areas that go calm and then yed yed and they and his crew are expecting you know a hot evening again although last night they had nothing whereas the night before they had a huge issue dealt with it nothing last night and now they might be busy again tonight so it seems to be sporadic but it is winding down perhaps a bit I'm hoping it's winding down there by you, Rick. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, guys, Vestone Scare Supply. <clears throat> so on the note, bombshell, uh, Rick, any last things you'd like to say? And then I'm going to let you let you go and let the audience go. <laughs> um, <laughs> the pre-in-prepared, guys, pre is very important don't waste until the last minute get it sorted out beforehand you don't want to be running around the last minute scrabbling for things test everything try it out don't don't i know part of your mind will say oh i'm being paranoid and i feel stupid doing this but just do it get your shit together get your shit sorted test it out have a plan um just see that all your stuff works together as well because like you know sometimes your normal carry holster might clash with your your bulletproof you, you know, if you're carrying appendix and now you put on a plate carrier or a bulletproof, you might have a problem drawing from appendix. You need to figure these things out beforehand. Um, so, yeah, the pre and prepared. And just stay safe and, and network is hugely important. You have to, no man is an island. You have to rely on each other and reach out to each other and back each other up. That's, that's about as beautiful and as succinctly put as I can, can imagine. 
uh, Rick, thanks for joining us. We'll, we'll do follow-up streams on this. I mean, you, you're a Piratus regular, you're a contributor, you're part of the team. Um, all the best for, for going forward with this will be in comms. Folks, thank you for tuning in. It was a record viewership tonight. Uh, like Rick is the most interesting guest I've ever had on, according to the viewship figures. So Rick, you can take that. Uh, talking about BDSM either. Exactly. Um, so thank you guys. Um, we'll do this again. I'll do a follow up with Rick within the next week or two. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Stay safe wherever you are. Look after yourselves and uh, good night.